the past several days we were at. And I would be having absolutely no complaints if it was like this all through the winter. I would like to welcome everybody to White Cloud United Methodist Church. We thank you for being here. And if you are visiting us, we pray that you can take something home with you that will that you will be able to ponder throughout your week. Uh, the announcements, as I'm aware of them, are in your bulletin. Um, we do have first. The Okay. Um, but I also got a one that I have to give according going along with that. The admin council meeting has been postponed. And I guess we will be made aware in a little bit, right, Janet? Okay. Are there any other that need to be made? Yes. Let's do it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We come again with some unwelcome news. Our numbers are going crazy with COVID, as many of you are aware. And we have noticed, although it's pretty good out there this morning, we've noticed that some Sundays we've not been as good at social distancing and keeping our distance from others as we should. And. Uh, we know that if we have a case in our area that's tied directly to our church, we would be shut down. And so in consultation with Jerry and Janet, our SPRC chair, and whatever else, we've decided that it would be better that we closed rather than have someone else dictate it to us. And it is not what we would like to do. But also in the midst of that, we're going to have to work together to try to make things as normal as we can. And I've talked to the various people involved, and not everybody yet, uh, but we're going to try to put together a normal worship service done here, with music, with a liturgist, with a pastor, with a setting that we have that we dearly love, and do it so that it can be broadcast on Facebook at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. So that those of you that have the internet capability at home can see it in your normal time frame and it'll look as much like a regular worship service as we can make it look. And we hope that those of you that do not have internet have some close family or somebody that you're around frequently enough to feel safe with them that you can get together in a small group and watch it together. We wish it didn't have to be this way, but it is. We were talking about numbers over the last few days, and I talked to my son who lives down in Grand Rapids now, and he's a veteran. And he was checking in with a number of his friends since Veterans Day is coming up this week and found out that the group, he works with the wounded veterans group down there to help get them some of the things they need. And he discovered that five of the people that they had been working closely with have now died of COVID. And it just kind of brings that home. I got a call from a knitting friend. She said, I just tested positive for COVID. COVID, and so is my sister, and my mother died two weeks ago of COVID. And it's, it's just becoming scary. And the bishop, and our district superintendent, and Jerry, and I, and everybody in the leadership of this church wants all of us to be healthy, to be safe, and to be gather again, hopefully soon. But we need to take this precaution now. So, I don't like that. And I'm sure you don't like it. But I think it's the right thing to do. I'd like us to pray and all who can. Before you pray, James, do you mind repeating that for the Lord? Lord, you are our guide. You are our, our companion. And we thank you for your presence.
presence with us as we go through these uncertain times. We've gone through the turmoil of the Black Lives Movement. We've gone through the turmoil of the election. And we are now into the turmoil of the transition. And we top it all off with COVID-19. But Lord, we ask your continued presence with us. Give us the patience that we need to deal with these changes as they come. We pray that you will help keep each of us and the people that we know safe. We ask you to be with those essential workers, the ones that work in hospitals and nursing homes and care for us, those that work at the gas stations and the grocery stores and all of the other places that we need to have stay open. Lord, we ask your presence with each and every one of them as we ask your presence with us today. Amen. Amy, did you have something you needed to say? I was just wondering if you wouldn't mind repeating. Those of us who were coming from Sunday school were a little bit late, and so we missed the very beginning of what you were speaking about. I'm sorry, I didn't hear all of that clearly. Uh, they came we in. were late for, from Sunday school, so we missed the beginning of your discussion. We're not sure what the hard decision was. She didn't hear your hard decision. Okay. Because it came in late. The hard decision is that we will close the church to communal worship for the time being, based on the strong, high increase of cases in the state and in our county and in our community. Um, they're going up and they don't show any signs of stopping right now. And if there's anything that we can do to help stop them, then we need to do it. So, thank you. We will do our best to broadcast a worship, more, a worship service done here at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. I'm assuming that goes out on Facebook. So for whoever can get together with somebody or watch it at home, please do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I'm laughing because I, I came in late, which isn't typical of me. But so the church is going to be closed, and that includes other services like Sunday school, also. I think it needs to. Uh, I'm okay with you continuing Sunday school. I saw it happening outside today. If if your numbers are small enough, and you can do it safely enough. I'm okay with that, but that needs to be, I think, the call of each individual Sunday school teacher to make sure you can keep your numbers down and do it safely. But we've noticed a couple of Sundays at church where people have been sitting well within six feet of other families and not distancing and clustering together in close groups after worship as they leave, and we cannot do that. Okay, anybody else have any concerns? Okay. Let's do um, our opening hymn, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken.
Good morning, Jesus. How are you today? We thank you so much for bringing us together to your home, for welcoming us with open arms, for surrounding us with your peace, with your love, with your grace. Father, we pray for each and every person here this morning. We pray for our nation. We pray for our community. We pray that you be with us Help us to do what needs to be done. We pray for your healing. And we thank you, Jesus, for all the blessings that you have given us. Please be with Pastor Ed and family and all those who have been lifted to you in each of our hearts. We give you all glory and all God's people said. Amen. Uh, ministry opportunities. Are there any that need to be brought to our attention, or have we said what we needed to say? I do have a Read. question. Oops. I do have a question for the church. Um, we had ordered eight bean bag chairs, and I can only find five for Sunday school. And even with the closing, it still would be nice if anybody knows where those other three are located. Um, I do need them. Um, I've checked everywhere. We've had building projects going on. I've checked at Benny's house. Um, but if you know where the last three royal blue beanbag chairs are, instead of rebuying them, you know, that's not being a very good steward of our money, I would just like to find the ones that we did purchase for Sunday school. So if you know which cupboard, corner, closet, attic, building they're in, just send me. I think I, you know, canvas the whole property, the whole... Um, you know, campus, but I can't seem to find them. So keep your eyes open, keep them peeled. If you can send me a text, write me something. We would like them when we do rejoin because we do need all eight. Otherwise, I have been given permission to reorder, but I'm, I'm about the stewardship. We already bought them. They're here somewhere. I just got find those buggers. And they're big, and they're bright blue. They aren't invisible by any means. So if you see them, let me know. Okay, looking for three? Um, and they're large. <laughs> <laughs> so they can't just hide under a bed. No, no, they're very large. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other opportunities? Okay, let's go to celebrations. What celebrations do we have today? Birthday. Birthday? Yeah. 39 again? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can go on with that. Okay, 83. Yeah. Yes, uh, in the midst of all this crazy, sad things that are going on in 2020, the girls' volleyball team won the district on Friday. So they brought oh, them the <laughs> And I just had a celebration for this beautiful weather we've had for November. It's awesome. I love it. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. I had a surprise yes. visit from my daughter who came from Wyoming, so that was really exciting. Um, and in addition to that, um, we, our Sunday school was big today, and it was wonderful. And, you know, we, we forget those things, but in COVID, when we're limited and all of that, it's just a blessing when we do get together. For everybody, it just lifts you up. So for all of you, you are a blessing to me today, and I'm celebrating you. I love being here. <laughs> okay, and I do have one more. I'm sorry. I, I would like to pick up on what Rita said. The Sunday school was large, you know, and one of the things I've heard is that in some places, they're meeting outdoors all the time, and there are a couple of schools, even in Michigan, that have set up tents outdoors so they can continue to be in school. And they say there isn't anything as being too cold. It's just bad clothing. You've got to wear the right stuff. <laughs> and I'm not going to ask the ones that are my age to do that, but the young kids, they've got no problem with that. So. And my last is my daughter, Teresa, and her family are now up here, yes, Yay. settled in, they are in Diamond Lake, they have a nice house, and they're less than four miles from Grandma. <laughs> okay, our hymn of praise, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. If you'd like to stand, you may, if not, stay seated. Let's say. 
may be seated. Um, it now would be time for our offering. If you haven't already, you can place your offerings in the uh, offering plates in the back on your way out. And we just thank everybody for their offerings of love. Uh, and we have our prayer of Thanksgiving, so we will you all pray with me, please? Father, we thank you so much for what you have given us. You have blessed us with so much, and we just give you the glory for all of it. We pray that you bless those who have given. We pray that you help us to use these monies for our church, our community, our nation, and our world. We thank you, and we give you all the glory. In your most precious and glorious name, I pray. Amen. And we have special music coming right now from, uh, I heard them singing as I came in. It's just beautiful. exposed to and contract the virus. So we need to keep all of them in our prayers, especially all of those that are fighting for our freedom, defending us in our cities and counties and states, serving us in many ways as essential workers. We need to keep them in our prayers. I have a couple of joys that I'd like to share. My two oldest granddaughters are about to move into or have just moved into their first real home. And uh, I'm extremely proud of the younger of those two. She's 25 and has already paid off all of her college loan, student loan debt and put down a down payment on a house. It amazes me. <laughs> Are there other joys and or concerns that we need to share this morning? Yes. Jane, my uncle, um, one of my two remaining uncles, Sal and Brody Steph, he lives in Boston, uh, and he has to have surgery on that hip. And he's, I'm pretty sure he's at least 90. So just a lot of prayers that he comes through. 
Just as a hopeful thought, my dad broke his at the age of 84, and he survived the surgery and lived a couple more years after that. So they can do marvelous things in our medical community these days. Are there other joys and or concerns? Yes. My granddaughter Amanda had had um, tonsils, adenoids, and sinus surgery, and she's not doing well. She's been five, so she really prayers for her. Is she having surgery or just dealing with those as issues? She had to have surgery down at the hospital. I don't know. But they went for the sinuses and then they had to do everything else too. The granddaughter is having various sinus and adenoid issues. Are there others? Yes, Shauna. and his family where two of them have COVID and so they're kind of in lockdown right now. Are there others? Yes. I'm going to ask you to take your mask down briefly because I can't hear you. Family members that are ill with COVID. You know, it was only a few weeks ago for that the first time I heard somebody in this congregation talk about somebody very close to them that had COVID. And a couple of weeks ago it was two or three. And now it's it's again a very scary number. It is something that we all need to be very cautious about. Are there others to be shared this morning? Jane. I also have a cousin who has COVID. His wife has had it for the second time. Mm. She is out of the hospital, but now he is in the hospital. And he's been on oxygen because of COPD. COPD. But he's in the hospital now, but now she's home. She's had it for the second time. She had it earlier this year. Somebody's had it for the second time and now her husband has it. It is frightening. Are there others? I see a joy sitting over there in that pew. She had it. Yes. My mom starts radiation tomorrow, so this prayers that in the next couple of weeks are survival. Excellent. How did others? Let us pray. Lord, this world has put us in some scary times. And yet in the midst of that, we hear some joy. We hear some good news. We hear of some that have been tested and the tests have come out negative. We hear of some that have had it and are home and functioning and doing well. And we hear of those that have it again or have it now. It's one of those times, Lord, where we call upon you. As the song we just sang reminds us, it is you that created us. And it's you that caused us to know about fear and to acknowledge fear 
but it is also you that taught us how to deal with those fears. It is you that taught us that there is more hope in this world than there is fear. That there is more peace than there is non-peace, than violence. It is you that helps us look on the good side of things and find ways to cope with those bad things that happen to all of us occasionally. And so, Lord, we ask you to continue to be with us, guide us, give us peace when our hearts are troubled, give us comfort when we're distressed. Help us to know how to comfort others in our midst. Not with just bland words, but with true love and understanding. For all of these things, Lord, we pray to you. And we know that through your Son, Jesus, our Savior, our guide, and our comforter, we can remain your servants. Amen. Now, the reason for which something is done 
or created or for which something exists. Exactly. And I thought, Gal, yeah, if that's what purpose means, that's a really big word, and I understand it about balls, but what's the purpose of humans? And so I went a little bit deeper with my looking at and are you ready to tell them about one of them? Jake, Jared, are you ready to read? Jacob, sorry, I had Jared do it first. I had Jared on my mind. And you had your hand up. Did you want to say something about purpose? Oh, sure. Did you get... I love it. Oh, I never thought to give a ball up for Halloween. That's a non-edible. Ollie would like that too, wouldn't he? In the Bible, when I looked up serve purpose, I noticed that there's a ton of purposes for us as men, women, children, all of us. The first one is in Ecclesiastes, and your turn. You ready? I want you to read Ecclesiastes 12, 13. What does it say right there in black? The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So one of our biggest purposes is to keep the rules, like six foot, wear a mask right now for us here on earth, right? But also the Ten Commandments, that's one of them. Another one came from 1 Corinthians, and 1 Corinthians says, so, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. So our purpose is to follow the rules and do things because we're Christians, for glory, because we want God to be proud of us, just like your human parents, right? Want your Heavenly Father to be proud? And Yep. <laughs> you are so thoughtful. You are amazing. And another purpose that I found that I thought was really good for us as kids is, did you know that one of the reasons God created us for the purpose of taking care of things on earth? At first, when he made Adam, the purpose was for Adam to take care of all the animals. Now, how many of you have pets? Um, I have two. You have two? Do you have any pets at your house? I didn't see you back there. You don't have any pets? No, not right now. But do you have a bedroom? Yeah, I'm <laughs> you have a bedroom? Do you all have a bedroom? Some yeah, of you might have to share. Pigs. Yeah, and you have pigs as pets? Don't have you don't have pigs? I don't have pigs either. The last one comes from Genesis, and it says, God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness, and let him have purpose to take care of all the fish in the sea, the birds in the heavens, and over the livestock of the earth, over all the little creepy things as well. Now, Miss Reed is also going to tell you that because not everybody has um, a animal, a pet, one of your purposes is to take care of your environment. And your environment means your room, your bedrooms. Oh, yes. God said so, clear in Genesis, way at the beginning. You want to make sure you got that. That was like in the first chapter. So our purpose is to do things that follow the rules, bring glory to God, and to take care of stuff. So today, we need to remember this, especially because when we take care of ourselves, when we wear a mask, and when we sit, we're also taking care of everybody else. It's showing love, isn't it? And we talked a couple weeks ago when Miss Rita was up here. The gospel in one word is what? Do you remember? It starts with an L. Do you remember, Jared? Jacob? No. Nope. The gospel in one word is love. The whole reason Jesus came here was just to love us, right? So we need to show love. Our purpose is to be loving beings. So we need to pray. And then I have something for you that you get to have. Right? The whole gospel. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you made us for purpose. We are not supposed to walk along blindly and not know what to do. We know that throughout the Bible, in the Old Testament and the New, our purpose is clear. Our purpose is to follow your commandments and the rules. Our purpose is to take care of our pets and our environment. Our purpose is to bring glory to you. Help us, Lord, fill all of those purposes. Those are really big jobs for us, even as little as we are. We thank you for balls that have different purposes, for softball, for bouncy balls, and for stress relieving balls. We thank you for masks, social distancing, and the people that are making the decisions to help us keep safe. Lord, we thank you for Jesus, because we know that through everything, 
your one message to us is love. Amen. I 
wish we could learn to get beyond the skin color, beyond what label they put on their religion, beyond the way in which they choose to worship God and love one another. And as we were talking, we were sharing encouraging words back and forth and we both ended that phone conversation feeling better than we had when we had entered it. And that's what our life as a Christian ought to be about. One of the reasons many of us come to church, many of the reasons people gather together at a wedding, or they gather together at a funeral, is to give one another encouragement. And I think one of the things we all lack now, more than anything else, is that ability to encourage one another and to be encouraged by one another. I like giving and getting hugs. And other than from my husband, for whom I'm very grateful for his hugs, I think I've had two maybe three in the last way too many months. And it's probably the same for many of you. My children are afraid to come visit for fear their necessary everyday activities will put Jean and I at risk. So we don't see our kids, we don't see our grandkids. And the same is true for many of you. Somebody said to me a couple weeks ago, you know, what I missed most about not having Sunday school was not being able to see each other and just, just talk about what's going on in life. And that's very, very true and very sad. One of the things that hurts most about needing to close the church again for a while, at least as a communal meeting place, is that it puts a little bit more than even just the six foot social distancing between us. We don't have the opportunity to greet each other in person as often as we would like. We don't have the opportunity to give somebody encouragement when they're going through something difficult. We don't have the opportunity to share God's love in the ways we used to and want to. And I have all faith in the world that we will again. So we need to be like Paul. We need to do whatever is in our power to encourage one another through these times. To give hope to one another. And I've already talked to Barb a little bit about it, and I'm hoping she will agree to do what I want her to do. But most of us have the new little church directory that Shauna did for us, and it has names, addresses, and phone numbers of many of the people that we would normally see on Sunday morning. And I've asked Barb to put together a list of those that might not be in that directory or that are not in that directory so that each of us can have a full list of the people that we would normally be able to see on Sunday morning. We already have in our bulletin a list of people that are unable to attend worship that would love to hear from us. And to that end, I have a challenge for myself and for all of us, every one of us, that we find some way, whether it be a simple thinking of you card that's already printed, or a note, or a phone call, or a text message, or email, that we make sure that we contact somebody else at least once a day. You can do 16 of them in one day and then not the other days if you want to, I don't care. But to set that as a goal. So that on Monday I might call 
you, and on Tuesday I might call you, and on Thursday, just to say hi, just to say I care about you, just to remind that person that God loves them too. Because that's what God's love is all about. When Rita was talking about the things we need to do, we need to follow the rules so we can do the best possible job we can of teaching, keeping everybody else safe. I would love to be able to come down there and walk around as I'm giving the sermon. But that's not going to work. I can't do that. So I have to find something else that I can do. We need that contact with one another. And as much as we dearly love to have it be physical contact, eye-to-eye -eye contact, we all know there are other ways we can do it. And as far as worship is concerned, in my, in my conversations with Shauna and, and Chuck and others that would participate in worship, I sincerely hope that we can get together sometime during the week and put together a worship service. It is as close to what we would like to do on Sunday morning as we possibly can. So that when you can video, when you can see that broadcast of it on Facebook, you can see our cross. You can see our sanctuary. You can hear Shauna's wonderful music. You can hear a liturgist whose voice you know and recognize, and we can put it together. And I'm hoping that at least a few of those times we may be able to have a few of the kids here, or a few people, our spouses at least, or our immediate family members with us so there is some sense of congregational singing. We need as much normalcy as we can get in these abnormal times. So we need to do all we can to encourage one another. But I like one of the things that Joe Biden has said a couple times, including in his acceptance speech. He talked about when he left his childhood home, his dad would always say, keep the faith. But mom said, now, share the faith. Share the faith by encouraging one another. Not just those within our congregation, but however you get groceries. If you go in the store, encourage any worker that you encounter during your passage through that store. If you do curbside delivery, thank that person who delivers them to your car. Thank the person in the gas station if you go in. If you have opportunity to have to go to the medical clinic or the emergency room or, or know of nurses or people that work there on a regular basis, make sure that you encourage them also. I have a new neighbor now that, that bought the house next door to us over the course of the summer. And I know very little about them yet, except that I know that he's a policeman in Chicago. And the one thing his wife has said to me is that when he's up here, he is so grateful for the friendliness of this community. Instead of the animosity he so often encounters in Chicago. We can encourage that. We can encourage him. We can encourage people that we don't even know. But above all, we 
encourage one another with the words that Jesus gave us. And like we just said, the main thing is love. God loved us. God loves us. And it's not going to stop. Jesus' love for us is not going to stop. And our love for one another, whether they look like us, act like us, or not, cannot stop. Amen. Amen.